Okay, uh, chapter 24 of Isaiah, it says, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, he maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. You know, I was wondering, uh, the way things are today, doesn't it look like the world's upside down, and, and uh, scattered abroad the inhabitants thereof? It, it seems like, uh, uh, although I'm not uh, anti-immigrant at all, uh, but it seemed like uh, people in England uh, are, are from all over the place here, and, and the people uh, in the United States, they're from all over. we got all kinds of, of people from other countries, which, which is nothing wrong with that, but it seemed like people are scattered abroad. They, they don't live in their own land that they started out with. They, they don't live there no more. Uh, some do, some don't, but it seems like we're scattered all over the place. You know, so we got all these minorities everywhere, it seemed like. And in chapter 2 it says, And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the uh, taker of usury, uh, to, to them the giver of usury to him. And what it's talking about here is uh, all this scattering and turned upside down. They said it's going to be uh, as with the people, so with the priest. You know, the church going to go through this too. Uh, as with the servant, you know, someone that's a worker, uh, so with the boss. You know, they're, we're all going to be in trouble. In other words, it sounds like today, don't it? And uh, as with the mistress, so with, uh, with the maid, and with the buyer, so with the seller. I've heard people quote that uh, quite a bit, you know, growing up, and uh, I never really saw it come to pass like it has today. It seemed like uh, the buyers and the sellers are, are all uh, hurting today as far as the finances go and all these things. It said the, the land shall be utterly emptied, and, uh, and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away, the haughty people of the world of the earth do languish. And it's talking about haughtiness and haughty people. Uh, you know, when's the last time you, you saw a good comedy? You know, you look in the world, if, if you have TV still, I, I don't, I have a, a TV set that I use on my computer and that's what I use it for. I don't tune in the TV channels. I've got hooked up to uh, to a HDMI they call it and it goes right into my computer so that's, that's I've got a good sized monitor for my computer. That's what I bought this set for is one of them flat screen TVs and I, I use that you know but uh, but all these things that in the, the other shows you used to watch, Saturday Night Live or whatever, you know, so supposed to be entertainment. It's not entertaining anymore. It's all politics. Everything is turned into politics. And, and just they, they can't have fun anymore. There's no more uh, light humor. There's no more good humor, you know, uh, and something funny. You know, you, you may hear it in the office or something around the house. You know, you'll think of something from years back, but you don't see it in the TV. You don't see it or hear it on the radio so much anymore. It said, The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languishes and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. You know, they're, they're out there. They're, they're trying to... The ratings on a lot of TV programs are going down, down, down. People just ain't interested in it. They're, they're trying to hype up the Super Bowl this weekend, but I don't know too many people. I suppose some people are addicted to the Super Bowl. Some people will even bring a TV in the church and they'll have Super Bowl Sunday. They'll be watching the, the ball game at church. I've heard of that in years past. They may do that, I don't know. I'm not interested in football, though. The earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. In five, it, it says, Because they have transgressed the laws and changed the ordinance and broken the everlasting covenant. If there's ever been a day when we, we've changed the laws and changed the ordinances and, and uh, fought against the, the truth of God, you know, and the truth of His Word is today, the earth is defiled under the inhabitants. You talk about pollution. You know, it's defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws. They'll try to blame it on burning coal or burning wood 
or something like that, burning gasoline in the car. They, they blame it on one thing or another. But it says right here uh, that it's uh, because they have transgressed the laws, the laws of God, and changed the ordinance uh, and broken the everlasting covenant. You know, like Brother uh, Bruce was saying, you know, those that forget God, you know, will be turned into hell. They've broken the everlasting covenant. There's a covenant with the Lord. He said, uh, all they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we're, uh, the, the, the countries are not calling on God's name like they used to. Uh, maybe some of this poverty will hit us and, and some of these hard times, like, like in the 1930s, the churches opened up. You know, churches, uh, they grew. They grew from uh, 1906, I believe it was. They had the, the uh, revival. You know, they talk about Black History Month this month. And uh, there was a, a what they call a, the revival out in Los Angeles. Uh, the uh, it was at uh, Bonnie Bray Street, uh, 1215, I think it was Bonnie Bray, and it moved to the uh, the, the other uh, church. At, uh, I forget the name of it now. <laughs> I wasn't going to preach on that anyway. But the, there was a revival then, you know, and things were were bad then. It was. Uh, Jim Crow era, and this uh, black preacher said he was a one-eyed uh, son of, of slaves. They they started preaching in Los Angeles, California, and they they didn't even put out bills like you'd see posters here and there. They didn't do that, but people come to that church. They came. It was around Easter time. It's it's a hunt, oh, it's back in 1906 when it happened. But uh, people would just be walking down the road, and they they, they would hear about that revival. And they would come to Azusa Street, you know, that's what the name of it was, the Azusa Street Revival. And they would come, they'd fall under the power of God, you know, and it, it continued into the 30s, you know, the churches were everywhere. Pentecostal churches uh, were flourishing and, all, and uh, all the churches were preaching about the same kind. I've heard uh, older people uh, tell me, older than me, I'm 74, but they, they were older than me. They said, Brother Dave, you should have been there 40 years ago. And that was that was back in 1977. They said, I should have been there 40 years ago. But I imagine they did see some things. I've, I've heard of uh, preaching and, and being in the old sawdust uh, floor. They'd have a, a gospel tent put up. And uh, they said that cancers would, would uh, someone would have cancer on their face. And the cancer would just fall off and be down there in the sawdust fall right off the man or a woman would be healed instantly and blind were received their sight many things like that you hear about that overseas now but hardly ever here i thank god for healing me from the covid uh, i got over that I, I never had a whole lot of trouble breathing i had a stuffy head that was about it and i had a uh, uh, what, what you call the, that uh, I had a tr trouble balancing and I ended up with shingles too and I still got the effect of those shingles but it's going away slowly you know I'm getting better every day I thank God for that in uh, chapter 6 of uh, uh, verse 6 rather I should say of, of uh, we're in Isaiah 24 it said therefore hath the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate and therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. You know, we, we've gotten, haven't gotten down to that point yet, but there's so much despair in the world today. There's so many people uh, thinking about suicide and thinking about quitting, you know, and churches are closing up. It said, The new wine mourneth, and the vine languisheth, and the merry-hearted do sigh. Like I, like I said before, you know, those that used to you have fun, you know, and talking and and uh, telling stories and such, you know, and humorous things. They don't do that much anymore. It's all political, like I say, uh, on the news and on the radio, whatever. It's a lot of politics going on, you know, and uh, you've got to uh, believe everything on their line or you're out, you know. And it said the, the mirth of the tablets uh, ceases, the, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp, See this, you know, thank God we've got music today. We do have some good music on here. I, I praise the Lord for it. But it said that the, the joy and of the harp uh, ceases. You know, all the music, it's just not, not as interesting as it used to be. They, they do not, uh, they shall not drink wine with a song. A strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down 
Every house is shut up and no man that no, no man may come out. Is that not today? It says uh, uh, every house is shut up, you know, because of this COVID and no man may come out. Some, you know, I think it's in California. I don't know if they loosen that up yet, but there's some places they don't let you out of your house. You know, whether you got COVID or not, you're supposed to stay home, you know. And, and of course, we, we're wearing these masks today and all that carrying on, all that going on. It said the city of confusion is broken down. It's, it's these cities that are doing that. There are cities like uh, Los Angeles and, and out, out west and uh, towns, Detroit, where I come from originally. That's the same thing there. The, the whole state of Michigan is messed up that way. And uh, we got enough in North Carolina messing us up. And uh, it says th there is a crying for wine in the streets and all joy is darkened and the mirth of the land is gone keeps repeating this about there's no joy no no hope for the future it's all gone and the city is left a desolation and the gate is smitten with destruction you know you you look at los angeles uh, uh, uh the only time i go there is on uh, google earth you can go there but i've seen videos uh, on youtube uh, people that go down Los Angeles all on the sidewalks are people living in tents, you know, homeless people. Uh, a lot of them are, are uh, ex-service members. They've been uh, Vietnam veterans and whatever. They're there. Maybe they're from Iraq, the veterans from Iraq. But they're living in, in uh, tents out there, no home. You know, they have no home. The homes are so expensive out there, they don't have them. And uh, years ago, they, they had mental hospitals where people went. They couldn't take care of themselves. They, they ended up in a mental hospital. Well, they went and turned all them out. You know, they emptied the hospitals and they left them to decay. Uh, and they closed them. And, and these people are out on the street going around. They don't know what they're doing. That they're just wandering around. And nothing, nothing. Uh, you know, they live on hardly. They, they live on, on what they can get. You know, what the government they maybe try to feed them or something like that. Some soup line or bread line. Uh, that's what they're doing out there, living in tents. And when thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be a shaking as of an olive tree and as the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. And they shall lift up their voice and they shall sing for the majesty of the Lord and shall cry aloud from the sea. You know, it's Come time, on, okay. time to cry unto the Lord. It's time to lift up our voice. I thank God we have some churches here in town like our church at Harbor Light and uh, Brother uh, Jared's church over there uh, on Airport Boulevard. There's many others here in town uh, that are uh, worshiping God, that are looking to God. You know, they, they have the sign out in the yard, be humble and pray. You know, and the, the, the Bible says, if, if my, the people that are called by my voice will humble themselves and pray and, and do right and cease from evil, you know, and lift up the, the name of God, you know, God would heal their land. And he would uh, bless them, you know, so they shall lift up their voice and they will sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. We ought to. We ought, there ought to be a time of doing that. We see all these things happen, all these houses shut up and people defiled and, and, and confused. We need to rely on that which changes not. You know, that's the Word of God. The Word of God by His Word. You know, the heavens are made. You know, the earth is His and He made it. And His hands formed the dry land. You know, we, we honor God. He created all things. Uh, Brother, uh, uh, Brother Urban uh, is a grandpa today because his uh, daughter had a baby. You know, his daughter, uh, uh, Bridge, uh, Brittany, had a baby, a little uh, Bradley, you know, a little Brad. He's cute as a bug, you know, <laughs> you might say, cuter than a bug, really. He he is uh, a kind of, well, you say overdose of cuteness, you know, kind of. He, he sure is a precious little fella, and he loves to be held, they say. If you put him into bed, he starts crying, then you pick him up, he's quiet. You know, he likes it when you pick him up and hold him. You know, he's already spoiled, the little fella. But uh, that, that's a wonderful thing. That it's God that, that produces these things. I, I thought about how miraculous it is. You know, each of us is a miracle. Uh, there was a time when I wasn't here. You know, I, I say my birthday was January 31st. But in, in 1947, that was my first uh, day of being born. Before that, I was carried by my mother for a while. But before that, there was no David Moran. You know, there was, there, I wasn't there. And God said, let there be, you know. And it's a miracle from God. It, it really is. 
that God allows these souls to be born, you know, and today we, we abort them, you know, we, we kill them in, in the womb, the very most innocent of our people, you know, we, we don't let them live, and they say that uh, as far as the black uh, community is concerned, 40% of those that are, are killed by abortion are black, you know, we, we kill 40%, and, and uh, the, the black population in the United States is way under 40%, so it's above average. We're killing black children, you know, white children too, and other ones, you know, they're all in there, but it, it's just not right, you know, to kill those that, that have no defense, you know, that they, they can't help themselves, you know, but we, we have this abortion going on. That's another way that we're uh, going against the laws of God, you know, like it says in this chapter. It says 15, it says, Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. From the uttermost part of the earth we have heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. The treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. You know, they're, they're trying to say this is a big reset, they call it in the world and uh, things are going to change. They're trying to get us under communism. They're trying to take away all of our liberties that we have under the Constitution. The, uh, but here uh, Isaiah is saying the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. And there's a lot of treachery going on in our government that they don't want to look at. The, the, uh, the news media are going along with it. They don't want to look into it. They, they just on, push, push it off. They pass it off and say, there's nothing to see here, nothing to see. You know, go on, you know, just live your life, go on. Don't don't pay no mind to the man behind the curtain here. <laughs> you know, like they said in that, that Wizard of Oz, you know, the, uh, the fear and the pit and the snare are upon the O inhabitant of the earth. And it's talking about fear, the pit, you know, falling into a pit and a snare, you know, where they would make a snare for rabbits and such. And uh, that, that's, it's, it's something that we can fall into, O oh, inhabitant of the earth. It shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. You know, things are going to get worse before they get any better. You know, praise God. And the earth is utterly broken down, and the earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. You know, there's going to be signs in the heavens, and there uh, talk about earthquakes, and all these things are happening today. It's an interesting time to be alive. It sure is. And the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. It talks about rock. <laughs> That's going to be something, you know, we haven't seen quite that yet, but I believe it's coming down the road. It said the, the, the earth will reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be moved like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. You know, all this stuff is happening. Uh, what we're doing, we're getting ready for the Antichrist to be revealed. He's, he's coming on the scene. He's that one, that uh, treacherous dealer who's dealing treacherously. You know, he's, he's undercover now, but one day he'll be revealed. But I, I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that we'll be raptured out of here before all that happens. You know, that's my hope. You know, it's a lively hope. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. God is going to come and bring vengeance on all this evil, all this wickedness stuff that they don't want to look into now. They're going to have to look into it one day. There's other scriptures that say at that time they'll, they'll look to the, bowl, to the moles and to the bats and they'll, they'll hide in, uh, in caves of the earth. And I, I looked on a map, you know, around Washington, D.C., there's, there's caves that they can hide in. Of course, up in Virginia, it's close to Virginia, there's all kind of caves. They'll probably be heading. They'll be looking for a road map. Or maybe they'll get that Gavin or something. And they'll find the nearest cave and go hide in there to hide from the Lord. Because He's coming. Uh, and He's coming soon, I believe. And they shall uh, be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days they shall be visited. And then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed. Now that's what the Lord was talking about. He said the sun, 
would be turned to sackcloth and the moon would be turned to blood. This is talking about that same time and we're living in that day when we can expect that. He said, The moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem before his ancients gloriously. Hallelujah. You know, that's the end of, the, of chapter uh, 24 and beginning into, into 25. Here, praise the Lord. It says, O Lord, Thou art my God, Isaiah says, I will exalt Thee, I will praise Thy name, for Thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counselors are of old, faithfulness and truth. And his word is truth, amen. You know, I found it to be so. I'm 74 years old. I got saved when I was 30. And from then, even before that, I could see where the hand of the Lord kept me from, from a lot of the evil that I could have gotten into. But then he saved my soul, and from that day forward, I have been blessed, you know, by him. He's gotten me jobs. Before that, I had to beg for work, you know. I, I would beg someone to practically to, to, to hire me. You know, we go through all this stuff, and, and you try to get your resume all up to date and everything, where you've been working. I remember there, there was a recession uh, way back when. I tried to get a job, and, and they said, well, what have you been doing for the last six months? And I said, well, I was on unemployment, you know, I, I was unemployed. And they said, you mean you, you didn't find no job? I said, no, there was no job there. You know, and that, well, that was my resume, you know, I, I'd been out of work. And, uh, but after I got saved, I had a man call me uh, that I went to electronic school with. And he asked me, I, I was working on a little uh, minimum wage job at, at, up in Flint, Michigan. And he says, uh, how do you like your job you're at now? I said, oh, it's okay. He said, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> he said, I want you to come to Detroit and work for me. And so I did. My mother was alive then, and, and she was in Detroit. So what I did, I, I, I stayed uh, the week uh, with her. I stayed at her house. I had a bedroom there uh, where I stayed. And, uh, and uh, I went and worked in Dearborn, which is right next to Detroit there. I worked there many years. Uh, I think about 11 years I think I had that job that a man come looking for me and uh, even when I got to North Carolina later it was 1989 I come down here uh, I, I worked in Radio Shack which was another minimum wage job and back then I forget it was 450 an hour whatever it was but it, it was not high like it is today higher anyway but I worked there and a man uh, he, he put out the word, he's looking for someone that could solder, you know, and they said, well, Dave Moran, he's the one that can solder. And I used to, uh, people would bring in their uh, cordless phone and it would be a dead battery in it. And uh, a lot of times our batteries that we had at Radio Shack didn't fit the phone, you know, but I would, I would uh, unsolder the connector from the old battery, put it on the new one for people, you know, and they knew I could do that pretty good. And so that's what I did. And they said, you, you need Dave Moran. I worked for a good uh, 20, 25 years on hearing aids. It was a man that uh, had a hearing aid office. And he got me a job in there repairing out of warranty hearing aids. So I made good money for 20 years, you know, on that. And the Lord got me these jobs, you know, where I didn't have to beg for them. I didn't have to go looking for them. They came to me, you know, and I've been blessed ever since. You know, it says... Uh, O Lord, uh, Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee, I will praise Thy name, for Thou hast done wonderful things. The counsels are, are of old, our faithfulness and truth, for Thou hast made a city a heap, a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city, it shall never be built. You know, he's going to take care of all the trouble we got down here. Therefore shall the strong people glorify Thee, the city of ter a terrible nations shall fear Thee, and uh, the, for thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. And, and, when, and when the blast of the terrible ones was a storm against the wall, you know, no matter what the world tries to do, you're safe in God. You know, if you, right. if you trust in Him, He'll, he'll right. see you through it. He'll, he'll bless you. And thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers and the heat as a heat in a dry place. Uh, even the heat with a shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible one shall be brought low. You know, that God is going to uh, defeat all these enemies that we have. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people the feast of fat things, a feast of wine on the leaves of fat things, full of marrow, 
of wine uh, and lees well refined. I don't know if that's talking about the battle of Armageddon or not, but he said he will destroy uh, in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. You know, we're going to find the truth in him one day. You know, those that deny him, those that try to say uh, there is no God or some other God is God, this that covering is going to be destroyed one day, you know, and God is going to reveal himself who for who he is, and he will swallow up death in victory one day, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the rebuke of his, peop of his people shall be taken away from off all the earth, and the Lord, for the Lord has spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him, and, and we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him. That's one of the enemies of Israel. And even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill, and he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them. And as, as he that swimmeth spreadeth forth his hands to swim, and shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands. And the fortress of the high fort of the wall shall he bring down, and lay low, and bring to the ground, even to the dust. And it goes on in 26. Here it says, And in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates, and the righteous nation that keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. You know, that's a scripture that I always like to think about. It said that thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high, the lofty city he layeth it low. He layeth it low, even to the ground, and he bringeth it down to the dust, even to the dust. Uh, the foot shall tread it down, the feet of the poor, and the steps of the needy. You know, he takes those that are oppressed, you know, and gives them power over their enemies. Uh, the way of the just is uprightness. Uh, thou most upright dost weigh the path of the just. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, we have waited for thee the desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee with my soul have i desired thee in the night yea with all my, the spirit within me i will seek thee early when thy judgments are in the earth and the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness you know one day it's going to be that way you know it's going to be his way or the highway now now it's the opposite way you know they want people to turn away from god but one day god is going to take his power and rain let favor be showed to the wicked and yet they will not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness he will deal unjustly and he will not behold the majesty of the lord people that are wicked in their heart uh you can do good to them and they won't thank you for it they won't uh they won't change their self they'll keep on doing doing those evil things you know they'll, they won't change but uh god has got the answer for that one day it's going to be uh, he's going to have the law come from Jerusalem. You know, the law is going to come out of there. And uh, nations that won't obey him, they won't have any rain on the land. They'll, they'll dry up and, and be no more. It says in uh, 26, 11, it said, Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see, but they shall see. And be ashamed for the, uh, their envy uh, at the people. Yea, the fire of thine enemies shall devour them. Lord, thou wilt obtain, uh, ordain peace for us, for thou hast wrought all our works in us. You know, it's God that, that works our works, you know. Uh, we do things that are right. We do righteous works. Uh, we, we, those that are saved, you know, you, you follow the Lord and you follow his word. But everything that we do that's good, I, I have to, to say it's from the Lord. You know, I don't do it myself. That that dwelleth in me, you know, is, is not right. But God works those works in us. He said, for thou hast wrought all our works in us. O Lord our God, other lords besides thee have, have had dominion over us. But by thee only will we make mention of thy name. It's just about time to quit here. But let's see, it said, the, the, talking about the false gods. It says, they are dead and shall not live. 
They are deceased. They shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. You know, when I when I got saved, I came to the Lord and started obeying the Word of God, doing what the, the Word says. And uh, I had a dream one night, and uh, I, it was uh, in a hospital, and I was laying on a gurney in the hospital, and they had uh, all these different lines going to me. And what they were doing, and they were, they were uh, 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 nurses around and doctors, but they had little horns on their head. They were little devils, you know, going around hooking up things and trying to, what they were trying to do was restore the old man. They're trying to, and they had those paddles, you know, you know, clear, you know, they're going to they're gonna restart the old man, the, 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 the man that had died when I got saved, you know, the old, old David Moran, you know, the old Irishman. They were trying to bring him back to life, and I saw what they were doing. I saw the devils were trying to get me back to that old life before I was saved. And I said, no, no, no. And I went through that hospital room and pulled out all the wires and all the hoses. You know, I said, no, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live, you know, the, the new man. You know, all things are new. Hallelujah. You, you, you come to the Lord and all things become new. Behold, everything the old passes away. I thank God for it. Amen. We're going to, uh, I guess we're going to do our sponsors. And, yeah. And uh, close the program.